Have you ever wondered why there's North Korea and South Korea? Ever wondered what happened to, you know, Korea? Like most geopolitical changes in the world, the division of Korea was the result of war. The Korean War took place from 1950 to 1953, but it wasn't really the Korean War that split the country. The Korean War just made the split more permanent, but it was already split. We need to look not only at the Korean War, but look at the bigger picture. The split had more to do with the Cold War. The Cold War was interesting as it wasn't so much a war in the traditional sense. The Cold War was effectively a war of wars. The Cold War was primarily between the United States and the Soviet Union, but in a more broad sense it was effectively an ideological war between capitalism and communism. The US and the USSR never actually fought each other in direct battle, but instead fought each other indirectly through proxy wars. One example would be the Vietnam War. The United States, who were helping South Vietnam, were at war with communist North Vietnam, while the Soviets provided them with tanks, aircraft and weapons, as well as billions of dollars in funding. Another example would be the Soviet war in Afghanistan. The Soviets fought with the communist Afghan government, while the United States gave $3 billion in funded to the Mujahideen to fight in the civil war. However, this turned out to be a horrible decision for the US, as one of the leaders of the Mujahideen turned out to be one Osama bin Laden, who later went on to form Al-Qaeda, who later went on to declare war on the United States. So in a roundabout way, the US effectively funded terrorism against themselves. But back to Korea. The Korean War is effectively another one of these proxy wars as part of the Cold War. But the split Korea happened even before the Cold War, the country was actually split at the end of World War II. If you've seen my first video, I talked about how Japan surrendered in World War II and had to give up land that they had acquired via force by signing the Potsdam Declaration, which included Taiwan. As well as Taiwan though, Japan also had control of the entire Korean Peninsula which the Japanese Empire had annexed in 1910 from the Korean Empire. The Japanese ruled Korea for 35 years before the surrender. But this is different from the situation with Taiwan. Taiwan's an island which made up a tiny amount of the Republic of China's land, so it's simply a case of handing sovereignty over to China. But with Korea, Japan took all of their land, so the Korean Empire had effectively been wiped off the map. Therefore, by order of the United Nations, Korea was to be temporarily split at the 38th parallel. The Soviet Union were to control the North while the United States controlled the South, with a plan to unite the country in time. It's important to note that at this point, the US and the USSR were allies at this time, although they didn't exactly trust each other. The United Nations scheduled elections in both parts of Korea. They were to be fair and democratic. In the South, Syngman Rhee was elected and the Republic of Korea was established, taking control over from the US military. However, in the North, the Soviet Union refused to hold free elections and a communist state was established with Kim Il-sung as the leader of the country, grandfather of the current North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. By 1949, all US and Soviet forces had withdrawn from Korea. The Soviets and Communist China had significantly armed the North Koreans with weapons and funding. The US on the other hand, they weren't quite so generous with the South Koreans and refused to even give them any tanks, leaving them seriously ill-equipped for a war. And war is exactly what happened. In 1950, under the direction of Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, North Korea crossed the 38th parallel and invaded South Korea. Stalin didn't expect the US to get involved since he had already withdrawn all of their troops and they didn't intervene in the victory of Communist China and the Chinese Civil War in their previous year. However, the UN Security Council unanimously voted to intervene in Korea. Ironically though, the Soviet Union was part of the UN Security Council's Big Five and had veto power. Unfortunately for them, they weren't there to veto the resolution. See, even though Communist China had effectively won the Civil War and had total control of the mainland, the Republic of China, who only had control of Taiwan, still held the seat of China at the UN. In protest of this, the Soviet Union boycotted all UN meetings. So the UN intervened to protect South Korea, although it's mostly US forces. The troops were led by the United States under the command of General MacArthur. Stalin promised to help North Korea as much as possible, however, he insisted that Soviet forces would not engage in combat with US forces. But why is this, you might wonder. I mean, why engage in all of these proxy wars and indirect fighting? Why don't the United States and Soviet Union just fight each other directly? Well, the answer to that can be summed up in three words. Mutually Assured Destruction. 
See, at the time, the US and the USSR were considered the two superpowers of the world, and the consequences of both superpowers at all at war with each other would have had catastrophic repercussions. As well as being superpowers, they were also both nuclear weapon states. See, in the early 40s, the US, with the help of the UK and Canada, worked on the Manhattan Project, which is basically codenamed for developing an atomic bomb. It's a slightly more conspicuous name. In 1945, the US showed the sheer destructive power of these weapons when they dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After seeing this, the Soviet Union significantly increased their own research into nuclear weapons and, in 1949, they successfully tested their own atomic bomb. So war between the United States and the Soviet Union would have inevitably ended in World War III and for the first time, nuclear war. This wouldn't have just been bad for the US and Russia, but absolutely, literally, everyone. And could have quite easily led to the end of human civilization. But thankfully that didn't happen. Joseph Stalin was fully aware of the potential consequences of engaging in combat with US forces. Say what you want about Joseph Stalin, but at least he was smart enough not to go to war with the US. Credit where credit's due, that's all I'm saying. By September 1950, North Korea had South Korea cornered in the Pusan perimeter and a communist victory looked imminent. The North Koreans had to send supplies to their soldiers on the front line, which General MacArthur thought he could exploit. Instead of trying to break through with ground forces, the US used their navy to flank the North Koreans. They took back control of the city of Seoul and managed to disrupt the North Korean supply line. Within just a few months, things had completely changed and it now looked like South Korea was on the verge of victory. However, at this point, China, who had thus far not been involved, marched their troops across the border and pushed the UN forces back to the 38th parallel. Control of the peninsula fluctuated for a while around the 38th parallel. Ironically, control ended very similar to what it had been to begin with. In 1953, North and South Korea signed an armistice agreement creating a de facto international border. It's worth noting that an armistice agreement is not a peace treaty, so technically speaking they're actually still at war. After the agreement, both sides built barriers to stop each other from crossing the border, and there's now a 4 km wide demilitarised zone. Which is a somewhat ironic name given it's the single most militarised border in the entire world. Speaking of ironic names, North Korea's official name is the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Which is ironic since several organisations have ranked North Korea as the single least democratic country in the entire world. And the good thing about talking about North Korea is, no one's going to be offended. I can safely say that no one from North Korea is ever going to see this video. In 1991, both North and South Korea became members of the United Nations, although neither country recognises the other and both consider themselves the legitimate government of all of Korea. The only place where North and South Korean leaders meet is inside the DMZ in a place called the Joint Security Area. The GSA, including the room they meet in, lie directly on the border, which isn't actually a border but an MDL or an armistice line. In fact, the line even passes through the very conference table they sit at. So the two leaders basically talk to each other from different countries and don't cross the line. There's a door to each side of the room which leads back to their own country. Today, North Korea and South Korea are pretty much as different as two countries can be. They both speak Korean and they both have the word Korea in their name, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. South Korea has a free market capitalist economy, while North Korea officially describes itself as a socialist republic, but a more accurate description might be a totalitarian dictatorship. So if you're planning on going on holiday to Korea, you're probably better off going to South Korea. <laughs> 